Hello everyone, welcome to our YouTube channel Premiere Next. In this video you are going to get all the information related to the latest review updates of the series called The Hijacking of Flight 601 A woman wearing the uniform of a flight attendant glances at her wrist, which has three dots written on it. A rifle is aimed directly at her head. Scenes from earlier in the timeline, when the same woman was getting ready for work and observing the blister that was growing on her heel, alternate with this one. March 1973 in Bogota. A robe Oliver flight attendant Eddie is rushing to leave her residence in order to make her flight. She is scheduled to work on a robe Oliver aircraft 601 out of Bogota. The nanny isn't here, and her three small boys are causing mayhem. When her youngest kid locks himself in the toilet at one point, Eddie pushes her way in and knocks out one of his permanent teeth with the door, necessitating an urgent trip to the dentist. The airport is bustling as usual. Two men, Valentin Villafin and Alam Div Attack, are in the parking lot. One is taping a revolver to his thigh, the other is holding a cake box. They intend to take flight 601. Leading by the stunning Barbara, the A-Robe Oliver stewardesses walk through the terminal after being weighed by their supervisor Moncola. In addition to making sure Marisol, a rookie stewardess, is portraying the proper image, Barbara also brushes off a married pilot with whom she had an affair. Eddie tries to convince Barbara to step in for her, but Moncola is aware of this and threatens to fire her if she doesn't show up on time. Because there are only 43 passengers on the trip, Barbara leaves the inexperienced Marisol as the lone stewardess, despite Eddie's best efforts to make it. Captain Lucena is interacting with Lekarica, an experienced co-pilot, in the cockpit. The two men carry out their plan as Eddie deals with Moncola firing her and talking over her head to Mustafa, the airline's recently promoted director, about whom she possesses information that will help her keep her job. Their goal is to have the DC-3 refueled in Medellin so they may continue their journey to Cuba, which is a lengthy flight. The hijackers try to get Marisol to give a passenger some water for his medication, but she faints from fright. When they refuel in Medellin, Captain Lucena orders Lekarica to call ground control and fabricate a story about the hijackers asking for another flight attendant. The only person who offers to board that plane after being dismissed is Eddie, in return for a fresh contract with Mustafa. She is taken aback to discover Barbara waiting for her at the Medellin airport. She wants to assist her friend on this flight and enjoys the thrill of being on a hijacked aircraft. They have no idea that they will spend days on the aircraft. Output of the hijacking of Flight 601 The hijacking of Flight 601, written by Camilo Prince and Pablo Gonzalez, attempts to balance being a somber hijacking thriller with a campy analysis of the actual hijacking frenzy of the early 1970s. The plot is partially inspired on a hijacking that occurred on May 30, 1973, and covered the most ground in time in Latin American history, 60 hours while hopping throughout the continent. Prince and Gonzalez decided to give the show a more intimate, soap operatic touch, maybe because of the nature of hijackings back then, when the attackers had political motives and no intention of hurting anyone. As these stories always are, the focus of the narrative will be mostly on the crew members who acted both on the ground and in the air to ensure the safety of their passengers. However, the first episode seems to focus a lot on the intimate, particularly with regard to Eddie and Barbara. Although they are closest friends, they represent different perspectives on what it meant for a woman in the early 1970s to be a working woman. While Barbara looks to be living a carefree, put-together life and having affairs with married men, Eddie is always juggling. Since they'll probably be the ones interacting with the hijackers the most, it will be interesting to watch how each of them handles playing the role of point person throughout this hijacking. How successfully the show's creators and writers will be able to strike a balance between suspense and thriller is what we're wondering. We get the impression that the frontier sections of the plot will disappear as the situation worsens and the passengers and crew attempt to figure out how to take down the hijackers. 
As long as there isn't an abrupt change in tone, that kind of transition can be effective. If you are watching this video on YouTube, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel for the latest updates related to upcoming movies and series. Re